<laughs> oh my god, I'm gonna miss this place so much. <laughs> no! All right, guys, I'm back from the United States Olympic Training Center and back in Berkeley. This week, I wanted to do a video on a Cal Men's Swimming Q&A video. A couple weeks ago, I asked you guys in a YouTube poll what questions you wanted answered from my swim team members. So this week, I'm gonna be asking a bunch of team members what they think about college swimming. As always, make sure to like and subscribe to the channel. And without further ado, let's get into it. All right, so the first question is, what are your thoughts on me never stretching after practice? <laughs> You know, this is the first time he stretched ever. <laughs> so there's this rumor that Dave started actually, that Cal Millis doesn't stretch. Cal, Cal goes to weights all the time, that's good. He goes to swim all the time. Sometimes he's out early for class. Dude, I have class. Class my ass. <laughs> I don't know, I think you stretch a good amount. Um, I've seen you stretch a lot of your uh, legs and shoulder. I think it's really good for your, you know, prehab and rehab. Um, yeah, maybe not as much as, you know, you should be, but. My thoughts on Millis not stretching, things work for different people. Millis is a, like a division one athlete. Things worked out, he's here for a reason. I personally stretch every day because it helps me improve my swimming. Stop the cap. <laughs> All right, so the question is, how hard was it to swim in college coming out of high school? That's a great question. Um, it's, it's definitely up to the individual. Uh, it's how hard you want to prepare yourself in high school, how hard you want to work, put your head down, focus on your academics, your athletics. Um, I did a lot more on my athletics and I worked hard to get into the position I'm in. Recruiting, talking to coaches, uh, doing my academics strongly. I think that it really depends on uh, what you're looking for in a program. Um, obviously there's like very top end programs like uh, as lucky as I am to swim here but at the same time like there's also walk-on positions available at pretty much any university and there's division one two and three for a reason and I think that uh, if you're truly driven to find your spot there's definitely a place for you to answer that question I'd say it's it's pretty difficult I mean it takes a lot of hours uh, outside of the classroom uh, a lot of people don't really understand like the commitment it takes uh, you know, you're up at, you know, 4.30 a.m. to make five, five o'clock morning practices. You know, before school, you show up to class all tired and stuff, but uh, at the end of the day, it is worth it, so. Uh, but it is a lot of work, yeah. The next question is, what are you and your teammates' thoughts on competing in your last collegiate season? Uh, it's, it's sad and exciting, both at the same time. Um, I feel like everything that I'm doing is like kind of the last day that I'm doing it, but at the same time, like super exciting. Yeah, I mean, same, same, same as Uvo here. Um, obviously, I didn't have the full college experience graduating in three years. And, I mean, it's, it's sad because it's ending, but it's also exciting because there's like a new, new step in your life and stuff. So just to like enjoy, I'm just enjoying uh, swimming right now. And I guess I'm not fully convinced yet. Um, could be my last, could not. You know, every practice gets more bittersweet um, and more important throughout the season. Um, but I think. You know, we've had a ride uh, together, both academically and athletically, and I think we've all done very well in kind of our, our small and mighty class. Oh, I'm stoked. I'm so excited. I'm happy to be here with the boys. It's so exciting to be uh, every day training with these guys, working hard, getting better every single day. Um, I'm ready to come going down to the end of the season and, and hopefully challenge another team for a national title. For myself, it's a little bit bittersweet. I've been swimming now for approximately eight years and swimming's been a really big constant in my life and I really do love the social interaction that I get from my teammates. That's something that's really, I will definitely miss. I also really definitely will miss, you know, grinding it out each day, but I think I'm gonna just take that grind and motivation and kind of shift it into my work life in the future. So that's what's gonna keep me going in the future. My thoughts on my last season, uh, obviously a lot of mixed emotions. This is, my last three months of swimming. I've been swimming my entire life. Probably gonna have an identity crisis. Like last one, fast one with the boys. Taking the competitive aspect from my life away will definitely, I'll have to find something to fill that void. Okay, Jason, how do you best mentally prepare for a big meet? So I'd say that every meet is very different, right? So in college, you have dual meets, which are kind of, it's basically get up and go. There's not a lot of effort putting into it. But when you go to something like an Olympics, you have one or two races instead of like five, right? You have to be well prepared. Eating the right dinner, getting to bed early, sleeping through the night, um, routines you should have 
created a long time ago are supposed to just stick to you at that point. When it comes to actually racing that day, you know what you're doing, you know? I mean, get a pen and paper out, like Dave always says, and write it down. So you wake up at what time? When do you go to swim? Um, what do you swim? What's your warm up? A lot of people just don't know that stuff. I mean, usually it kind of comes with my training, nutrition, and sleep. Um, I feel like if I'm putting the money in the bank, I kind of just have to expect, hopefully, that's kind of expect a good performance. Um, it doesn't always happen, but that kind of what calms my nerves going into a big race, just like I did the best I can, now it's just game time. Something I like to do to prepare myself is mentally walk through my race. Um, and lead up to the coming weeks before the big meet, I like to think through my race strategy and then go and hit those paces in practice that I'm going to need to be hit. Kind of helps my body physically and mentally prepare for what is to come. And then I also like to remind myself of training. Just remind myself when I'm behind the blocks, Kyle, you've worked hard enough to do this. And at the end of the day, what's gonna happen is what's gonna happen. So it just go out there and really have fun at the end of the day when you're at that big meet there's nothing else you can change and to just go out there and do everything you possibly can to win how did forrest break the t oh oh yeah how did forrest break the tv nice oh. 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 all right so the next question is what are some recovery tools that you use i'm probably one of the worst people to ask that question actually because i don't really rely on like outside things i guess you could just call them like uh people that take like pre-workout or stuff before races i don't do any of that stuff and then recovery specifically i'd say maybe every once in a while only when i feel like it's super important i'll use like one of the theraguns or something i honestly don't really roll out that much um i'd say the big three is really important and those are the basic foundations of everything right sleep nutrition and hydration. So if you don't have those three right, it doesn't matter what you do. You can train as hard as you want. If you're not sleeping eight or nine hours a night, you're not eating enough carbs, good carbs, quality carbs, proteins, and vegetables sometimes. Right, Cal? Yeah. And uh, if you're not drinking a lot of water, um, you're done, right? So, you know, stretching is kind of important. Shout out to Cal Millis. <laughs> <laughs> stretching is kind of important it really depends on who you are if you have a lot of muscles you need to stretch a lot more because you need to be a little bit flexible so i use a, a broad range of recovery techniques uh ranging all the way from a compression suit all the way over to a, a massage gun um i also we also have a training staff here at cal that helps us if we have any sort of injury um we can get ice baths and recover with ice but these are generally the two that I like to do in addition to rolling out with a foam roller. Uh, the next question is, what is it like to swim for Dave Durden? Dude, swimming for Dave is definitely one of the opportunities in life that I'm most grateful for. Um, obviously he's established something great um, and a lot bigger than each of us swimmers as individuals. Um, and to be a small piece of that is amazing. Now Durden's great. Uh, I've learned so much from him in terms of the way he leads, uh, the way he speaks, the way he frames his thoughts, um, everything is honestly just a great example of um, what you'd want to be in a leader. <laughs> um, he's, I think the best way to describe it is he can also, he can, he can be like a really good coach and really um, be on you during practice and really detail oriented, but he can also act like he's just one of your like, guys on the team and he's just another teammate. So I feel like he's a pretty, he's a pretty good balance and he could really just team. The best way to describe him is he wants you to succeed, not just in the water, but also out. He's looking for, he could care less if you're the fastest swimmer in the world or the slowest. He just wants you to become a better person and that's really what I found in the first couple months of knowing him. Uh, swimming for Dave is truly a blessing and I feel honored to be able to be a part of this program. Uh, he's an amazing coach and you know that with every set and everything he tells you that he truly has your best interests in mind. And um, yeah, it's just all around an awesome experience and I'm very lucky to have it. He's kind of like your dad in a way, like in a good way though. Uh, it's like the father figure on the team. Uh, you know, he always has the right information, like you want to do right by him, you know, in a good way and uh, it's just a good opportunity. It's really fun to swim for him. All right, so the next question is, what is your biggest tip on how to get recruited to swim in college? I would say that you really have to be passionate about it. It's not, it's not an easy sport, so you really have to enjoy it. If a coach ever comes to your club to watch someone else, 
work your butt off and try to just show them how good you can be and show them that you have potential in the pool. But like, if you actually want to become a swimmer at uh, university, I mean, we're both from Spain, so this is all based off of like an international experience. Um, but normally you would just contact the recruit, I mean, the coach, head, uh, head coach, head coach well, assistant coach. coach, coach there's works. always their emails, contacts on, online. Uh, send them an email, tell them who you are, where you come from, best times, a bit about yourself, hobbies and interests. And like if they, I mean, if they like you and stuff, they'll definitely respond. For me personally, with my experience, it was don't let the coaches tell what you what you want in their time frame. Kind of like tell them what you're looking for and if they can't accommodate that, like you, I mean, they're not gonna maybe try to accommodate you in the future mm -hmm. in regards of like what you want outside of the pool, inside the pool. Um, it's mainly the relationship with the coach that I kind of took note on. Okay, perfect. Yeah. I'm gonna be doing a whole nother video on how the recruiting process works for some and what my recruiting process was like. So make sure to stay tuned for that. So that's gonna do it for this video. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope to answer some questions in further videos. Uh, maybe we'll do another follow-up video. So if you guys have any more questions, make sure to drop them in the comments below. As always, make sure to like this video and subscribe to the channel. And until next time, go Bears.